we've got the layout of the website we've got the navigation up here we've got the headings we've got a paragraph here we've got the bullet points here now we're going to style the website because it's not looking that great at the moment we're going to start on the navigation um, so we're going to um, use cascading style sheet to style this now remember we left this link in here um, so this is the link that as the html web page loads the structure of the website loads it gets to this point and it it, it fetches the file style.css it knows that it's a style sheet and uh, it knows what to expect within that file so it just loads it in as it goes so in the style css at the moment we've got an empty file this is where we're going to put all of our commands for styling um, the html okay so as i said we're going to we're going to initially style this navigation here now in the index um, we we put the the links to our different pages uh, it, within this nav element now um, all this really does is kind of identify a block of, of um, code within our page but we're going to use that nav we're going to use that word nav to um, identify the, um, the, the the section of our web page we're going to style okay so um, to do this we, we just type nav because that's the um, that's the section we're going to be identifying and then we're going to open with curly brace and then close with curly brace so uh, top right hand uh, side of your keyboard don't often use them they're known as curly braces they're not um, brackets um, or actually we call them parentheses when they're not open and close parentheses they're not square brackets they're the curly braces or curly brackets we're going to use okay so that surrounds the commands we're going to or the style we're going to be using for nav um, so what i want to do i'm going to put this in a um, i'm going to change the font uh, i'm going to put it in a block of color and then reverse out the text in white um, so that's that's kind of generally what we're going to be doing so i'm going to initially give it a background color so as we start typing it it suggests things we can do so it the, this IDE, this integrated development environment, already knows that in a CSS file, these are the kind of uh, styles we can use. So as you start typing, you'll find it, it will make it slightly easier because um, it will identify um, what we're what we're able to do. So we're going to use background color. So hit enter. So it's background color, and then um, it's a um, colon. And then we have the uh, command. So there's a couple of ways we can use the color. We can actually name the color, or we can actually identify it as an RGB, red, green, blue color. So we'll do that first. We'll do another one. Uh, we'll do the simpler one later. So RGB. As you, you can see, as I type this, it's indicating what I can do with it. So there's RGB and also RGBA. The A is the transparency. We're not going to use any transparency. We're just going to use red, green, and blue. So RGB and then open parentheses, which is open bracket. And so we now have three numbers to identify the color with. So we've got red, we're gonna have zero red, and then we're gonna put comma, uh, green, we're gonna have zero green, put the comma. I'm gonna make this one slightly blue. So we'll put 100 to have the blue. So what you'll see there, it's actually identified the color. And if we change that color, maybe 255, because this, these are using bytes, so each uh, red, green and the blue each one of those is using the bytes so the maximum number we can go to is 255 because um, 8 bits and a byte that's the maximum number we can we can go to and you can see the color just here is um, highlighting the color we've just chosen but I'm gonna I'm gonna make that uh, 100 you can also select that and it will um, it will let you use the color picker to do that as well okay so at the end of every single um, um, line in a css file you have to use a semicolon to indicate that you've just finished that line so just bear in mind at the end of every single line um, you have to put a semicolon okay so we're going to fix this position at the top of the website so as they scroll they're always going to see the navigation okay so that makes it nice and easy for users to use the website regardless of where they're scrolling to so we're going to say the position is fixed and then semicolon now we want it uh, 
right at the top of the page with no gaps around it by default when you look at html web page there um in in different browsers it does change because each browser has its own kind of default styling um in this one for example in chrome um, the default styling is a serif font you can see the the text down here has um um kind of a um uh, tails sorry so it has tails on the end of each uh, each letter that's a serif font but that's that's because chrome has decided that's the default but anyway so, so one of the defaults is uh margin around everything is you know a few pixels here and there so what we're going to actually say is we're going to say the um we're going to set the margin at the top to zero we're going to set the margin to the left to zero and we're going to set the margin to the right zero semicolon okay um now we're going to set the height of the um the navigation to 40 pixels and we want the we, we want the navigation to stretch completely across the page so um, we're going to use the display function for that there's a number of ways of doing this but we're going to use display function and use flex at this point i'm going to refresh the page And so what we can see now is we've got this navigation block across. It's the color is blue. The position is fixed. If we scroll up and down, you can see the navigation doesn't move, but the rest of the page does. Um, there's no gap around the top, the left and the right hand side. The height is 40 pixels and the display has flexed all the way across the page. However, we can't really see the text because by default, again, Chrome by default has um, blue text for links and also what we're what we're missing is part of the heading because that's kind of moved up and that's because we set the position to fixed uh, and it kind of what it means is the rest of the page kind of didn't you know just kind of moves into that space okay so we're going to fix some of these issues first thing we're going to fix is the heading school subjects needs to be seen so we're going to affect the body tag so um, we type in body and then curly brace open and close and we're going to say okay we want the whole of the body down we want to move that down and so we're going to well how we'll do that is we'll give it the margin at the top uh, we're going to give that 50 pixels okay so we just refresh this and because we've given the um, margin at the top 50 pixels of the body um, it's moved everything down remember <clears throat> this doesn't actually affect the navigation because we've told it to be position fixed and that means it will ignore any kind of margin uh, related to the body okay so what well, we, we still can't see the the links but they're still there but we just can't really see them so we're gonna we're gonna deal with that next okay so um <clears throat> the cascading style sheets part of the name of that cascading is it will pick up elements from as it cascades down the um uh, the the the, um, the code so if we look at the index.html what we can see is we've got the body and within the body is the navigation and within the navigation we have the links so what we're going to do is we're going to use the navigation links and we're going to change just those kind of links so if we have links elsewhere which in your final final page you will the the style is only going to affect this link here because it's nested within the navigation so that's part of the uh, cascading okay so we're going to do nav a so this is only going to affect the navigation a links okay so one of the first things uh, we want to do is change the color of the text and i was saying there's two ways of doing this uh, one is identifying the rgb color the other one there's just some colors that are available to us and so we can just type in white now straight away if we refresh that we should be able to see the text much easier okay but what we can see is it's kind of wedged in the top left hand corner and there's no space between it so we're going to we're going to resolve that now and also i think we'll take away the um We'll take away the underline as well. Let's start with that. So we're going to change the text decoration and we're going to say no 
or none for text decoration. We're going to give it. We're going to give um, the links a margin. So this is going to be a, an overall margin. So in the body, we just affected the margin top. Um, for this one, we're just going to say margin, and we're going to say margin twelve pixels for the whole thing. <clears throat> so every each link will have a margin of twelve pixels. Um, I want the text to be uppercase. Now we could just go back into the index and we could change that to all uppercase, or we can affect that using um, CSS. So text transform, and we can say uppercase. Um, finally, I'm going to change the um, the font. So at the moment it's a serif font. This is Times New Roman. Um, I want a sans serif font like Arial. So um, we're going to do font family and we're going to say sans serif. Now as you type this it will give you a few different options of all the different fonts you can use. Now the only thing you have to be careful about is some of these fonts aren't available to all computers. So for example your computer won't have dual sans um, or it might have Calibri but it certainly won't have dual sans installed. Um, you, you won't have impact font installed. You will have Arial, but you won't have Helvetica. So these kind of things you've got to be aware of when you're, when you're making a website. You can actually embed fonts, but we're not going to be doing that today. But we're just going to choose Sans Serif. And what that does is it chooses the font that is available on your computer that is the standard Sans Serif font, and it will fix that. So we'll just refresh that and have a look. OK, so we can see that we've got the margin all around each link of 12 pixels. We've changed the font to a sans serif font. Doesn't have tails anymore, like these, like this, the uh, font here does. Um, and it's the, they're all uppercase. Um, I'm going to change one more thing and change the weight of the font, and we'll make it bold. Okay. There we go. Just makes it a little bit um, bolder. Now. <clears throat> We had an underline on it before, and so what we um, that, that kind of indicated clearly that it was a link. And it kind of, although when you roll over it, you can see that it's a hand, it'd be good to see a little bit more um, information to show that it's a link. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change it so when we hover over it, it's going to change color. So, to do that, uh, we're going to create a new um, style, and it's a nav a colon hover. So when we hover over the link we want something to change and we want the colour to change when we hover over the link. Um, so um, we can change it to like aqua. Okay so we run that, refresh that, refresh, there we go. So we refresh that and now as we hover over the link that changes colour because of this <coughs> style sheet rule here. Okay, so that's working. And we can see on the index page that works. But when we go to the bio page, the navigation has reset to what it was before. And the only reason for that is, is if we look at the code in the, the bio.html, we look at the head. All we've got in the head is the title. Whereas in the index page, in the head, we have that link that loads the style sheet. So what we can do, we can select that, copy that, go to the bio.html, and in the head, so that's where all the uh, meta tags and um, links need to go, we just place that there. And when we refresh the page and go to the bio now, it's already picked up that style sheet and it has applied it to every page. So this is a real benefit of style sheets. Um, it separates the style from the structure. So the index HTML is the structure of the of the pages. The CSS is the style of the pages. However, you you generally want the style to be the same across all pages. So um, how we do that is we have we have multiple HTML pages, but only one CSS file. So every page accesses the same style. Um, so um, I want you to add your CSS to if you haven't already, uh, you should add the CSS. Feel free to make changes to make it look um, however you want. Play around with the colors, um, maybe the fonts. 
um, I'm going to do one thing. I'm, I'm going to change one thing. Um, I would like my paragraphs to be a different font. So to do that, the, the paragraph tag is the P tag. So I'm going to change the P tag and I'm going to say font family sans serif. Okay, so we're going to run that. Have a look at what that, see what that looks like. So what we can see here is the uh, paragraph tag. So there's only one paragraph tag on this page has changed to sans serif font, whereas all these other ones haven't because this is a heading, this is not a paragraph. Same with this, this is not a heading, um, uh, this is not a paragraph, this is a bullet point or an, an unordered list. Now, I want to actually change the whole of the website to a sans serif font. So instead of changing just the P tag, we'll get rid of that, change the whole of the website. Remember this is cascading style sheets. I can go to the body, I can change this font family here to sans serif, refresh this. And because all of these tags, this heading tag, this paragraph tag, this unordered list tag, because all of these are within the body, so we see here the body, all of these tags are nested within the body. It means because I've changed the um, because I've changed the, the the styling of body, it cascades down through all of the others. So that's just something to bear in mind as well. Okay, over to you.